All right, so we're going to be uh, learning how to do short term discipleship. And when I think of short term discipleship, it actually begins uh, as soon as we start sharing the gospel with people. And I asked you all to um, watch the three circles video. So take that as though I have shared the gospel with you and you are a yellow light. And I asked you, would you be open to getting together and hearing more about Jesus, some stories about Jesus, okay? So this is our first meeting and we're going to use the three thirds process, but you're not going to have a clue that we're using. Okay. But you'll see how we insert a story into the three thirds process. So you guys, uh, act like enthusiastic yellow lights. And we want to keep our conversation kind of to a minimum. We'll have time for Q&A at the end. But we kind of want to model this process and make it as easy to follow as possible. How does that okay. sound? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. So... Uh, you know, I shared the three circles with you and I asked if we can gather in your home and I see you brought two of your neighbors with you. Milton, that's great. And so we're going to talk about a story, but let's, let's pray and catch up a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Father, I okay. thank you for Milton and for Trina and and Julie and Lord, we just ask that you would open our eyes and our ears to hear from you. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what, what was a, a high and a low from your day yesterday? We talked yesterday, but maybe something exciting or maybe something challenging happened. Do you have any highs and lows? Yeah, I would say this, this that it feels good to be able to get out um, and start exercising and getting out in nature. We've had a gentle snow up here up in the mountains, and it's a good time for me to, to um, commune with God when I get out in nature. And that's what I've been trying to focus on. Mm. Right. How about you, Mel? Um, I've met a couple of people. Uh, one lady in Aldi's on uh, day yesterday, and uh, I was talking to the cashier. The, the lady that I met was the uh, security guard. Mm -hmm. and, and I was talking to the cashier and uh, she's from, she said something in Spanish and I said, que Dios te bendiga, mi señor. And she said, she responded in Spanish. She said, you thought I was Hispanic, didn't you? She said, I'm from Hawaii. <laughs> and so I'm excited about meeting my first Hawaiian. How about you, Julie? Oh, everything's going really well at work. I mean, some of my colleagues say they're really quiet, but I think I'm really busy. So I think someone's looking after me. So I'm really mm. pleased about that because uh, if I'm busy, then I'm earning some, some dollars. So that's great because dollars are needed. So I'm really happy about that. It's good. Mm. Um, a low. Um, yeah, yeah. Finances are a bit tricky at the minute. Um, you know, after Christmas, uh, you know, it's, it's hit hard. We overspent at Christmas on the grandchildren and, you know, we're just trying to pick up the pieces in the new year, but uh, mm. it'll be okay. But, you know, things are tight mm. at the minute. So, you know, that's the only low. All right. Mm. Well, my high is getting with you all today. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh. my low is my son is in a dangerous 
situation, and we continue to pray for mm. him. So I'm a little concerned for him. Let me mm. pray for you all. Father, I, I thank you for Trina and her uh, chance to get out and exercise and enjoy nature. I just pray that you would reveal yourself to her through your creation. Thank you mm -hmm. for milk and being able to meet some new people. And thank you. Father, for Julie, uh, just that you're giving her a good time at work. She's staying busy, but we do pray for her finances. Yes. That Lord, you mm -hmm. would provide. So thank you for that. Mm. So and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we shared, uh, or you saw the three circles yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, did did you have any discussions with family or coworker or friends about that illustration where we talked about brokenness and how Jesus came in and he is restoring people to God's design? To, did you have a chance to talk to anybody about that? I mostly spoke with people about my story and uh, probably <laughs> I should elevate Jesus' story a little bit higher than my story. Yeah, I shared it with a friend of mine and, um, you know, they were quite interested. They'd not heard it before. So um, uh, they, 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 were, they were thinking about it. I mean, they, they said they weren't ready at this stage to, um, to go back into God's perfect design. But... I think it definitely got them thinking, you know, where am I? So, you know, I think it's it started something in their mind. So mm -hmm. I want to follow that up, follow it up, you know, in the near future. Yeah. And if you'd like to, you can invite them to join this little group. Mm. So. Great. Well, uh, Jesus says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Yeah, and so uh, that's found in the Bible in Matthew four nineteen, and basically what I'm trying to do is help you all follow Jesus more closely, and I am being what Jesus calls a fisher of men. So mm -hmm. that's that's the reason why we're doing this to help you. Get to know Jesus better. Mm -hmm. So I shared that illustration with you yesterday called the three circles. And here it is on my piece of paper. And as you look at this, what do you remember about what I said yesterday? Uh, Julie, why don't you talk about one of those circles and just Let's review what we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. So the one on the left with the heart in it, that was God's perfect design. Mm -hmm. So you were saying that, you know, when God made the world, he made it perfect. And he wanted people to be there with him. And uh, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. God wanted us to be there with him in that perfect world. Great. Um, but people decided, I didn't want to do that. They wanted to do things their own way which I, I thought was quite surprising. I didn't realize that. Mm. Mm. Good. Mm. Milton, describe that second circle with the brokenness. What's that all about? Um, when we turn on the radio or our Facebook uh, uh, page, we can see a lot of brokenness. Uh, violence, sickness, disease, a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that was not God's intent. Um, and, and, and people try to fix their brokenness, if you will, with all kinds of different things. Uh, success, mm -hmm. um, education, um, uh, drugs, alcohol. 
uh, just a host of different ways, uh, relationships, in and out of relationships, and it never works. It's like a bungee cord. They always seem to spring right back mm. into brokenness. Mm. Good. Trina, tell me mm -hmm. about that circle on the bottom. What did you hear yesterday? Um, well, the answer to the brokenness is having a relationship with Jesus. And um, the crown represents that Jesus is king and he should be king in our life, Lord of our life. The arrow going down, um, the cross is what he did on um, taking all of our sin. The cross is that he, um, he died and then he rose on the third day, the arrow going back up. And so, and, and the answer for leaving the brokenness, but still we in the, we, we remain in the broken world until Christ comes back, but we don't have to live as broken people. Mm -hmm. We can live as people who have been restored. Mm -hmm. So we wow. do get out of the brokenness, mm -hmm. but the way to do it is when we turn from our trying to fix our brokenness, and turn to Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and you've got the repent, you know, um, there, repent or turn, turn from it, repent, yeah. and then trust in, um, in Jesus. Mm. And I'm not going past that because you said stay where the, the crown is. So I'm, I'm staying yeah. right there. Right. The brokenness. Very good. And then he restores us, right? To Yes, yes. He restores us back to the heart. <laughs> Good. Well, for hearing that just one time, it's amazing how well you all know this story of the three mm. circles. But we're going to tell another story, and we're going to see how the three circles relates to the story of Zacchaeus, and I'm going to tell you the story, and then we'll read the story. There once was a man named Zacchaeus, and he was a short man, and he was very rich because he collected taxes from the people, and oftentimes he would swindle them, cheat them out of their money. But he heard that Jesus was coming to town, and being a short man, he couldn't see over the crowd, so he climbed up into a tree. And as Jesus was coming into the town, he sees Zacchaeus in the tree, and he says to Zacchaeus, come on down, I got to go to your house. And so Zacchaeus hurries down the tree, and he starts walking with Jesus. And in the meantime, the crowd is grumbling. Why is Jesus going to eat with a sinner? Well, as Zacchaeus and Jesus are walking, Zacchaeus says to Jesus, you know what, Lord? I'm going to give half of everything I own to the poor. And if I cheated anybody, I'm going to pay him four times what I cheated him. And Jesus, he says, today salvation has come to this house, for he is a son of Abraham as well. And he says, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. So now we're going to read the story. And Milton, if you would read the story for us, it's right there. It's Luke 19, verse 1 to 10, 10, in the Bible. This is a true story from the Bible. Verse 1, he entered Jericho and was passing through. Two, and there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Three, Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, and was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature. Or 
So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through the way. Five, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Verse six, and he hurried and came down and received him gladly. Seven, when they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Eight, Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor, and I will give back four times as much. And I will give back four times as much. Where am I? Where am I? Uh, and if I have defrauded, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. Verse nine. And Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house because he mm. too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm. All right, so that's our story for today, the story of Zacchaeus. What happened in the story? Let's review. What did you hear? Julie, why don't you sum the story up for us in about 30 seconds? Well, there was a man who was um, living a bad life, um, and he wanted to um, see Jesus. He didn't really want to talk to him. He just wanted to see him, and um, he couldn't. He couldn't see him, so he climbed a tree. He thought he was quite well hidden. And as Jesus walked past, Jesus stopped directly and looked right at him and says, I need to come to your house today. And, um, yeah, the amazing thing was he got, got down from the tree quickly, Im immediately. And um, Jesus um, was going to go to his house. He could hear the people muttering, saying, you know, oh, Jesus has gone to be with a sinner. So he started up a conversation with Jesus. He, he thought, well, you know, I need to put things right. He said he was going to give his money to the poor, uh, half, mm -hmm. I think it was. And if he'd, done, if he'd done anyone out of any money, he was going to pay them back as well. So, you know, he had a, he had a change of heart right there and then. Yes. And, um, you know, Jesus mm -hmm. totally accepted him. He said, you're a son of Abraham. He hadn't really heard that before, I don't think. And um, then Jesus told him, you know, why he'd come along that day. He came to seek and save the lost. And Zacchaeus thought, well, yeah, that was me. I was lost. But Jesus found me in the crowd. So wow. it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Mm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Looking at our three circles here, mm. where do you see brokenness in the story? When the people, when the people begin to grumble uh -huh. about the fact that Jesus wanted to go to uh, to to Zacchaeus's house, there's brokenness. Uh -huh. So maybe the brokenness was they weren't willing to admit they were just as broken. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other brokenness that we see in the story? Zacchaeus was broken, you know, working as a tax collector, not the most um, amazing job for someone to do. So, you know, he was a bit lonely, wasn't he? People didn't like him. So although he had money, you know, he thought that was going to make him feel, you know, um, good about himself. Mm -hmm. This money wasn't bringing him any acceptance by people around him. People didn't like the guy. Yeah. Right. Trina, do you see any other brokenness? I, I don't know. I guess I'm also curious that he was curious. Zacchaeus mm. was curious about Jesus. I, it doesn't really say why, but I find that interesting, you know, that he ran ahead, climbed up the street so he could get a really good look at this guy, you mm. know, and was just stunned that he was going to come to his house, that he, mm. he was chosen. You know, I just, I find that interesting that he was so curious about him, mm -hmm. but and that, um, that might be an indicator that, you know, God's perfect design is there and it's imprinted 
on our hearts, but because of our sin that mm. leads us to brokenness, uh, he has the scent of that. You know, like uh, we talked in yesterday at the sunset and, you know, the laugh of a baby. We talked about seeing God's design, but our mm. brokenness has, our sin has clouded that. So mm. that's good. Good. Mm. Where, where do we see Jesus intervening? How does he intervene? By acknowledging Zacchaeus. Ah. Mm -hmm. Acknowledged him uh, and, and sort of invited himself to Zacchaeus's house. <laughs> wow. wow. All right. Anybody have yeah. something else? Go ahead, Trina. Oh, no, I, I just was looking at the, the words, the way he said it. He told him, he goes, well, hurry up and come down here. Yeah. You know, it's like mm -hmm. Jesus didn't, you know, he didn't stall. He, hurry, get down here. You know, we're going to do this. Yeah. So he was real in, intentional um, about who he selected and was ready to go and do it. <laughs> yeah. And Julie, what's the last statement that Jesus makes about lostness? He said, I came, came to seek and save the lost. That's yeah. why he came. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Trina, you, you brought up a great point. How did Zacchaeus turn from his brokenness? But right as soon as you got to, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I re immediately I thought he repented right there, right there. Yes. So, I mean, to me, that's what really popped out. He was admitting what he had done, and he was willing to make amends for it. Not just say, yeah, I was wrong, but he was willing to make, um, to, to go back and not only just correct it, but really correct it. Yeah. You know, and if, if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I'm going to restore it fourfold. So mm. I, I see a man who is, you know, sorry, yeah. but more than sorry. He wants to go and make it right. He's repented. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's powerful. One of the things too, Chuck, is uh, Jesus never mentioned anything to him about doing what he said he was going to do. Mm. That was the effect mm. that Jesus had on him. Yeah. He, he knew people, people know where they're at. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And he turned. And so Jesus restores Zacchaeus. And how do we know that he, Jesus restores Zacchaeus? Well, he says today, salvation has come to your house. Yeah. Wow. Um, Isn't that cool? Today. Yeah. Well, here's an important point. Had Zacchaeus gave anything to the poor at that point? According to the story, no. Had mm -hmm. paid anybody four times what he had defrauded them? No, not no. yet. No. <laughs> so he hadn't done anything but change his heart. Mm. Mm. Call repentance. He turned right. from wow. his brokenness. Wow. Places Jesus. Mm. Wow, mm. that's good. Okay. And yeah. then later, Jesus would die on a cross for all our sins. He would be buried and rose again in three days and now is the mm. king. So wow. Let me ask you all this question. Knowing what Jesus did for you, God sent his son and he died for your sins and now he's the king. Would you be willing to turn from your brokenness and embrace him 
as your king and his forgiveness like Zacchaeus did. Would you be willing to do that? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus came and died for you and now he's the king? Do you mm. believe that? Yeah. Absolutely. Would you be willing to tell the Father that you believe in Jesus and you want Jesus to be your king and turn from your brokenness? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Well, what we'll do is we'll pray the best way we know how. And we'll just tell God we're turning from our brokenness. And we believe that he sent his son, Jesus, mm -hmm. and died for all my sins. And I'm forgiven by his actions on the cross. And I want him to be my king to mm -hmm. all the shots in my life. All right, so let's practice the story of Zacchaeus and try to keep it to 30 seconds. You don't have to have all the details, just kind of summarize it. So we'll start with you, Trina. Oh, okay. Um, all right, well, Jesus was on the road. Um, traveling and there was this man who was a tax collector named Zacchaeus who was very rich he had everything that money could buy and he hears of this Jesus passing by through his town and he decides to get a better look so he climbs up on this tree so that he can see him when he comes by and to Zacchaeus surprise Jesus notices him and he stops him and he directly says to him, come on down from that tree because I'm going to come to your house today. Mm -hmm. And Zacchaeus shocked and was surprised. And he, he had heard about this Jesus, but now he's had an encounter with him. And he has decided at that moment that, that he wants him. That he wants this Jesus. And so he is seeing, he is seeing something about himself and how he lives. And he's, he's sorry. All right. So he's decided that he is going to give back everything that he has ever taken. He has ad admitted where he is wrong and he is ready to make amends. And so Jesus reply to him is today. Salvation has come to your house, Zacchaeus. Mm. So mm. I don't know how to do that in 30 seconds. <laughs> no, your turn. So there was this real, real bad guy, and Jesus was passing through this town, right? And, uh, and he was on the road, and as he passed a certain point, he looked up and he saw this, this, this guy up in a tree, and, he, and, and this guy said he made a decision. He wanted to see Jesus, and Jesus come down. I'm coming to your house today. And... Uh, he came down, and as they were going, people began to grumble. He's going to eat with sinners. And Jesus said, uh, 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 and Zacchaeus said, I've heard a lot of people, and I'm going to give half of my wealth back, and I'm going to give four times back to anyone that I've defrauded. And Jesus said, you're not far from the kingdom of God. And uh, he said, uh, salvation has come to your house today, buddy. And, uh, and I came to seek and save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm. All right, wow. So Jesus was passing through Jericho and there was a man there called Zacchaeus. He wanted to see Jesus. So the crowd was there. He couldn't see through the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a tree mm. and he was, he was waiting for Jesus to come. And Jesus was just getting to the spot where Zacchaeus was and looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I, I need to come to your house today. So he came down and as he came down, he could hear all the people murmuring, complaining. Uh, Jesus is going to be at the house of a sinner. And Zacchaeus thought, well, you know, he's, they're right, really. I've got to do something. I'm going to give half of everything that I've, I've got to the poor. And if I've cheated anyone, I'm going to pay them four times back. Mm. And um, Jesus said, um, you know, salvation's come to your house today. 
and you're a son of Abraham. And Jesus said, this is what I came for, to seek and save the lost. Wow, great job. Very good. Everybody. Mm, good, great. Julie. Good. Well, you know, uh, Jesus is changing our minds, our hearts, and our hands. What we do is very important. And so what I'd like you to do between now and the next time we get together, I'd like you to share what happened to you today with somebody else. Or you can share the story of Zacchaeus. Who, who would you like to share your story or Zacchaeus' story with? Hmm. My friend, Phil Pardo, he works in the financial industry and a very successful man. And uh, I've been interacting with him a little mm. bit lately. And I, would, I, I will share uh, Zacchaeus' story with Phil Pardo. Great, Phil. But I think that I could probably go and share this story, the Zacchaeus story with him. Yeah. Yeah, they're, really, they're really good, these stories, because people love stories, don't they? Yes, you know, they do. You can just say, I was reading a story the other day. Well, I wonder what you think about this. Can I tell you? And they just listen, mm -hmm. won't they? So, mm -hmm. um, my son Daniel and his girlfriend are coming around for dinner on Sunday, so I'm, I'm sharing it with them. I've done the three circles with them, but they, you know, they weren't <laughs> ready to turn and believe. But I, I think the story of Zacchaeus, yeah, I'm going to share that with both of them on Sunday over the dinner table. Yeah. And I'll see some soldiers on Sunday, so I'll, I'll share with them. Great. Great. Mm. Uh, can we meet again tomorrow and for another story? Mm. All right, so we'll meet the same time tomorrow, and we'll mm -hmm. go through another story, and mm. we'll keep learning how to follow Jesus. Is there anyone we can invite to be with us? I'll let you think about that, but feel free to invite friends, neighbors, co-workers, anyone you want to listen to these stories about Jesus. Mm. Let me pray. Okay. Father, I thank you for Julie and Milton and Trina and Lord, uh, the decision that they made today to follow you as their king to receive mm -hmm. Uh, your forgiveness and uh, Father we thank you for Jesus who is our King and uh, Lord we just pray that you bless them and protect them until we get together tomorrow in Jesus thank name. you amen mm -hmm. and now, man. really getting together tomorrow but that's part of the role play um, right right and so let me walk you through the process that we went through and open it up questions but you notice we use the three thirds we didn't have to explain it we just walked them through that okay mm -hmm. so they experienced the three thirds um we didn't we did talk about accountability but it was very uh subtle it was did you tell anybody about the illustration that you saw yesterday mm. that's mm. that's kind of important because you're going to see uh who are the people that are eager to talk to others mm. okay. mm -hmm. but we walk through prayer highs and low praying mm -hmm. for one another notice i did most of the heavy lifting mm. You all were true yellow lights. You're mm. a little nervous. You don't know the etiquette and all that stuff. So you have to do the heavy lifting. You're, you're guiding the process. And then uh, uh, vision casting was just real simple. Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. I said, mm. I'm helping you follow him and I'm being a fisher of men. So you mm. plant that seed for identity and vision right off the bat. Mm. And then we reviewed the three circles from yesterday, which you mm -hmm. guys did a 
bang up job on. Mm -hmm. Maybe a true yellow light wouldn't have as much detail. Mm -hmm. Kind of guide them through the process and don't belabor it. Just hit the highlights. Mm -hmm. And then we shared the story. Mm -hmm. Notice I told the story, Milton read the story, and then Julie reviewed mm -hmm. the story very succinctly. Mm -hmm. So we heard that story three times. That's kind of important for people to get the gist of the story. And then we just walk through the three circles asking the questions, where do you see brokenness? Where mm -hmm. do you see God's design? Mm -hmm. Where did Jesus intervene? Mm -hmm. How does Zacchaeus repent? How did Jesus restore him? Mm. So we use the three circles mm. as a template for discussion. Mm. And it's all review. Mm. And then we practice the story. And then we talk about who could we share the story, our story, or Zacchaeus mm. with. And then we set up a time to meet again. Mm. And so we walked all the way through the three thirds process and they wouldn't even know that's, that's the process. Mm. But now you have established a pattern for every meeting that includes those very important elements for life giving and life transforming elements, if mm. that makes sense. Right.